Hello, everybody <clears throat> out there in YouTube land. Barb here from barbstamps.com. Thursday evening, I'm live. I know that I think, I think when I set this up, I think I put the date down as May 10th because I thought today was going to be May 10th. It's not. It's from May Barbstamps.com. So, Thursday evening, I I'm live. I think I kind of messed that up, but I'm here. Literally, you guys just woke up. I, I can't even believe this happened. Uh, my husband is working late, the late shift right now. So we had some early dinner at like 3.30. And he left and it was about, I don't know, 10 minutes to 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. here. And I went out to the living room. We have a kind of a, a little rocking chair out there. I thought, I'm just going to sit here for a few minutes and look outside. I don't know what happened. I just woke up and I saw my son outside getting something out of the back of his truck. I'm like, oh, what's he doing? And then I looked at my phone and it said 4.48 p.m. I go live at 5. <laughs> 12 minutes ago, I woke up. I don't know what woke me up. I don't know why I woke up. I freaked out. I'm like, ah! Like I'm kind of running down here to the basement where I work and I, you know, I'm frantically trying to put some makeup on, comb my hair, whatever the case may be. So here I am. <laughs> wow, that was, that was a little bit of crazy time for me. So anyways, I'm like Trish said, I still needed to sleep. I literally have not been sleeping very well at all. This, these shingles are kicking my butt literally kicking my butt. Um, I can't lay the way I normally sleep on my side sleeper. Well, actually I can't sleep on my side or lay down. Uh, there's a nerve in my back that's affected, whatever, from what I understand, shingles kind of attacks a nerve and then this nerve is going crazy. So I actually named it Mort. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the cartoon uh, movie series, Madagascar. But in that cartoon series, there was a character named Mort and uh, King Julian the lemur really hated him. And in this one particular scene, he said something about Mort is really annoying. And my family, we, we loved those cartoons. And so we watched those. Uh, and it just became kind of our family motto, Mort. And so if you, if something was being annoying, whether it was like an inanimate object or, you know, a person, our dog, whatever, it was mortish in our family. So it was an even this nerve mort and <sighs> mort is very annoying. And so I took my last, I got some gabapentin. A lot of you are probably familiar with that. I got some gabapentin and I took my very last one about two o'clock this afternoon. And it's never, it's never made me tired before. So I don't know what, I don't know what happened. <laughs> But thankfully, I woke up and I was able to get here because we're live. <laughs> wow. Anyways, uh, yeah, the shingles is still kicking my butt. My rash is mostly gone, um, but the nerve thing is, it's driving me crazy. So I don't know if I may have to go back to the doctor and say, I don't know what else there is to give me, but... I need something else. Um, and I hope that, I mean, and I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe I, it'll go away. Maybe it's just, you know, still in the process of healing and being to the end. But thinking about it, you know, I'm leaving for Norway in a week. Um, I have to leave here on next Friday. So I don't want to be dealing with this on my vacation. Anyway, so that's all about that. So I hope you guys all had a great week had some fun things go on or whatever the case may be. Oh, and my phone, of course, wasn't plugged in. So my phone is about to die. So I have to plug it in. So that's going to make it a little difficult when I flip the phone. Man, I just can't believe that happened. Anyway, so um, I don't think I really have any funny stories or maybe I do and I'll, they'll come to me. I'll remember. I, I don't know. I can't think of any off the top of my head. My son has not been doing anything silly. Oh, my daughter is done with college now for the semester. Uh, so she actually has been very excited. She's been getting the highest scores um, in a couple of her classes on a lot of her tests. And on the final in her immediate account, 
immediate intermediate accounting class she got a 97 which was the highest grade in the class so she is again pretty excited and definitely has found her calling um in this uh in this accounting world so um i'm very proud of her and i'm excited that we're going to get to go on this trip together and just kind of hang out and have a good time so that's something that's about her she's doing very well so that's really nice um what else Oh, our catalog kickoff. We're still we're still going strong in there. Kelly was live again this morning with some uh, extras. Uh, we do three live events where we show where we do the make and take projects. Um, and then we also each do another live event where we just kind of uh, create whatever we want with whatever we want. We try to use some of the products that are in your make and take kit. Um, just uh, so you have some other ideas of maybe what to do with those items but yeah we just we just make it where we want we just whatever we're inspired to make then we make so uh that's pretty exciting so kelly was live today i think dean is live saturday and i think i'm live monday i think monday night anyway then that'll be the end of it and then we have our uh, challenges are still going on i think we have through the 18th of may for everyone to uh, post their cards to the challenges and then we will draw winners um and then uh we're hoping everything is going to go out uh next week so that's that's our plan to have all the make and take kits out next week so if you guys haven't ordered a make and take kit yet um you can order one for me in the description of this video um otherwise you can find the other links on that facebook group so um gosh i guess that's it um mort has been really bothering me today standing up um i don't know why i don't know why but anyways we're gonna try to make this work and that's all we can do so if you would be willing to like share the video that would be awesome i think there's a little share button somewhere down here um also you could subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified when i do go live um i usually go live every thursday night unless I'm ding dong and I put the wrong date or time in or something like that, which I kind of did this time. I scheduled it for the right time, but in the description, I wrote the wrong date. So Ugh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you would thumbs up, YouTube likes the, uh, that's part of their algorithm. They like it when you comment or thumbs up videos, um, that, uh, makes the algorithm push that content out apparently. I don't understand all that behind the scenes stuff, but that's what I understand. So there you go. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and flip the camera and we will get started with our fun projects for the day. All right, and like I said, ugh, this dumb, because I was late, I didn't get to um, charge my phone. <laughs> so my phone, is I have to hook it up. And so when I do that, then it gets, oh, it just really gets off kilter here. Um, and it's not really very um, level, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So I got to try to compensate for that. Oh, is it still off? I feel like it is. Sorry, you guys, close your eyes. This is always so annoying. Ugh. Especially when I have to plug it in because it just, it can't, Maybe I'll get lucky and it'll charge up quickly. We'll see. That's as best as I can do to have it be a level, which it is not. I understand that, but it's the best I can do. So let me pull my tripod out of the way here so I can see what we're doing. So I have been using the Darling Details um, items uh, a little bit and i have to say i'm really excited about these fun project projects no products in the class so we're using the like i said the darling details um stamp set and the dies and i'll get those out when we start uh, making the project i gotta run and grab my dies um we're also using the incredible i think it's called bright and something or other paper I'm sure that's not the real name of it. I don't think it's something or other. Uh, where is the... Is this the card? Ugh, I feel like I'm still asleep. This is terrible. Um, Here it is. Bright and beautiful 6x6 six six designer series paper. That is what we're doing. And I still... This is bothering me how crooked this is. 
Sorry, you guys. Ugh. I hate it when I forget to charge my phone and then I have to do this. It's really annoying. Bright and beautiful paper. I think Cheryl got that for me. Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl is such a help to me when I am live because I just cannot remember the names of any of this stuff. So it's the Bright and Beautiful Designer Series paper. The kit gives you half of that. Uh, you get the package of the opaque opals. Opaque ovals. Excuse me. They're ovals, not opals. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be using some blending brushes so you can add those onto the kit if you want along with that um, bundle and then I'm going to use the gorgeous sheer ribbon combo pack and I didn't realize this you guys looking at it in the catalog I did not realize that this ribbon has little silver it's got silver accents uh, running through the edges of the ribbon so each ribbon has the silver accents so that's the bubble bath and then here's the lemon lolly. It also has the silver running through. And then on the Azure Afternoon, it also does. It's so pretty. Look at that. It's just it's so pretty. So I'm loving, loving, loving this ribbon. So we've got that going on too. And then finally, we're using the four square masks um, also. So here are the four square masks. They are fun, fun, fun. Now mine have pixie spray on them because as you guys know, I am a pixie spray freak when it comes to masks. This is pixie spray. You can get it on Amazon. I probably have a link to it in the description of this video. It makes your masks stay, you spray it on there and it's a, like a tacky adhesive. And so it stays tacky on the back of your mask so that it'll stick to your paper. So when you're using masks, they're not sliding all over the place. And I just never take it off. Um, the directions say you can uh, get this off the adhesive if you want. But I, why would you want to? So I just leave it on all the time. I never take it off. Um, I just find it super helpful. So anyway, that's um, something you can also get if you need it. Okay, I think Mary has something about swaps. Do you do swaps on the trips? Um, yes, Stampin' Up! does do a swap. If It's optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Um, there's a card swap and a 3D swap. Um, basically, what you do is you make 20, I think it's 26 cards and 26 3D items. And then we drop them off in the um, hospitality lounge. That's kind of a place that Stampin' Up! has a room on the cruise ship where we can go in and mingle and chit chat. And they usually have candy and treats in there. And then usually we have some kind of a spinning wheel where we can spin for prizes. Anyway, we go, we drop them off. They keep one um, and then they swap them out. And then we get 25 different cards back, which is pretty fun. And 25 different 3D items back. So yes, so that's another thing I have to do. I've got to do uh, 26 cards and 26 3D items before we leave next Friday. Um, yeah. Oh, Nancy says she loves the Pixie Spray. Yes, Pixie Spray is amazing. Uh, when I first heard about it about a year ago, uh, I was very intrigued. So I bought it just to see what it was all about. And I was really, really impressed with it. it it's just amazing. Um, it's very low tack, so it's not like super sticky, but um, it just sticks to your paper so that you can use masks without it moving around. It's just really, really helpful. So there you go. Okay, so that's enough about that. I am going to do a card with this tonight for you guys. Uh, it'll actually be a card that's in the class. So um, hopefully you'll like it. Okay, uh, make and take packets for the new catalog kickoff. We talked about that already. Uh, there are nine cards in the kit. Uh, you get the pre-cut cardstock kit for that plus $35 in Stampin' Up! product, which includes a couple different designer series papers, some some of that, not the entire package, some papers, um, a half a roll of the herringbone ribbon, the uh, some gems and some tinsel gems, and the jute, and that's it. So there you go. Oh, Belinda is also a Pixie Spray fan. Yeah, it's really, really good stuff, you guys. And I'm pretty sure I have it linked in the description of the video. If I don't, I will link it um, after the fact so that you can go back and check it out. So anyway, uh, catalog kickoff, make and take packs, uh, PDF files on my blog. I always have those. I keep trying to update that. I have a lot of other classes to add to it. It's just right now I've got so many things going on. I haven't been able to get some of my older classes on there, but they're coming. Um, Stamp Happy Academy, that is kind of... Um, that's who is sponsoring basically, quote unquote, our catalog kickoff. So if you are a member of Stamp Happy Academy and have been since uh, February of this year, you will get the kickoff for free. Otherwise, it's only $15, pretty inexpensive for two weeks full of fun, fun, fun. Um, and then as usual, I always have adhesive kits. 
available. They come in these cute little pouches and you get glue dots and black and white dimensionals. You get a liquid glue. You get a seal adhesive, a tear and tape adhesive, an adhesive eraser, um, a, what do you call that thing? Ruler, gosh, blanked out, an adhesive eraser, and then a sand eraser. And then I also do sell packs of cards, 20 cards. They're uh, hand-stamped cards. Um, and so I do sell these in packages of 20 for $25 plus shipping and links to both the adhesive kit and the cards are in the description of this video. And the card packages I have ready to go. So they're not something that you can pick and choose what kind of card you want. Um, they're just random all occasion cards. So there you go. All right. Let's go ahead and do our Darling Details card. I need to grab my dies. Hold on. Okay, sorry. Like I said, I just woke up prepared. Good Lord. Um, okay, the reason that what drew me to these dies are these main big dies. Okay. First off, we have this large die. They're both frames. They make frames. So here's the large one. Uh, so cute. It's got this cute little stitching around the edges. And then these little flowers also on the inside. And I have found that the die does a really good job of pushing all of these little dots out. Um, so I didn't, I had very few that I had to poke out myself. Um, so there you go. Um, then we have the smaller one that actually has these kind of beveled edges. I think that's what that is. Is that beveled when the corners are cut off? I don't remember. And then finally, we have this fun little um, edgelet uh, die that I am using on another card tonight. So this is kind of what drew me initially to this set, uh, this bundle, were those three dies. But there are a lot of other dies in this set. So we get these four cute little leaves. Uh, they are These do not cut out stamped images. But then we also have a couple other pieces that don't cut out stamped images. There is this little guy here. So cute. And this little thing. But then we do have ones that cut out stamped images. So this is a leaf set, a three piece, three leaves. We have a large flower, a partial flower, um, a little bud, another leaf, a stem, a tiny flower. This is a little like stem and two leaves that this little flower can go on. And finally, like a, a leaf, what would you even call that? Just like a sprig of some sort. So the dies are amazing. And then here are the stamps. The stamps are very whimsical and floral, obviously, but they're just so cute. Um, and then there's a lot of nice sentiments in here. So it's really a nice set that's got everything you would need in it. So we're going to go ahead and use this today uh, to make our cards. Let me go ahead and put these back on here like that. And get some of this stuff out of my way and get my paper pack in here. Gosh, I hope I have everything in here. Like I said, I just, I just woke up. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so funny. Um, I have a thick white card base. This is four, what is this? Four and a quarter by 11. I just lost my head all of a sudden. And we're going to score this at two and a quarter. Amy says she wants to get this bundle. It should be on your list, Amy. It is so cute. I really have been having a lot of fun with it. So four and a quarter by 11 is our thick white card base. And I am going to score it first off at, I believe, two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to slide this into my trimmer, get it at two and a quarter, get my cutting blade out of the way, and give it a nice score. And that's the only place I'm going to score it. Um, whoops. Hello. Just about dropped my trimmer on the floor. Uh, so I'm going to fold on that score line, lining it up. Um, on the sides, and let me get my bone folder here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up, and I'm going to have the ends meet. And that's why I don't need another score line. I'm going to have my ends meet so that they're really nice. And then I'm just going to fold that down flat. So that's what I have. And then I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card doing that, like that. 
Shella says she is planning on buying this bundle next. You won't be sad, uh, Shella. It's really a fun bundle. All right, so then out of the bright and beautiful paper, I chose this pattern of the kind of um, bubbles, I guess. And I cut this to, what is this? It must be two by four. Yeah, so that's two by four. And then I have a piece of bubble bath that I cut to three by four. And they're going to both go on the top and bottom flaps of our card. But I do want to add a little bit of detail to this piece of bubble bath first. And so I want to use one of the masks. So I'm going to actually bring in this little guy here that is, I don't know, to me it kind of looks like a computer program. <laughs> Does anybody remember that, like, oh, what the heck was it? It wasn't DOS. It was something else where you had to like punch out all the little things and that would be like the program like on a card. That's what this reminds me of. I don't think that's what it is, but that's what it reminds me of. So I've got a piece of scrap paper that I am going to take and I'm going to put my scrap paper. I'm going to line it up with the edge of. It doesn't matter what um, row of squares, just line it up so that it's nice and um, that it's even. So I kind of lined it up right below this uh, line of squares here. And then I'm just going to throw this onto my scratch paper. And since it's covered in pixie spray, it's stuck on there really nicely now. Okay. So um, I do have a small blending brush here. Uh, for this particular dye, it doesn't really matter too much. Or not dye, this mask. It doesn't really matter too much what size blending brush you use, whether it's a small or a large. Um, either one will work. Sometimes if you have um, uh, specific masks and they have little tiny things, like if you're building a flower or something, you might have just a tiny area that you would definitely want to use the small brush in. But I just happened to have a small brush that was clean, and so I decided to go ahead and use it for this particular um color. Uh, Patricia asks, is this in the catalog or an online exclusive? Are you talking about the masks, Patricia? If you're talking about the masks, they are in the catalog. They are $10. And let's see if I can tell you what page they are on. Uh, here we go. They're on page 136. Right up here in the top of this photo here is where you will find them. Okay. There you go. 136, $10. Or get the kit and you'll get them in there. Uh, Pat says, when I did my master's, we had to write a program and punch the cards for the big IBM computer in 1975. Yeah, that's that's what this reminds me of for some reason. I just That's just funny to me uh, that that's what it reminds me of. I'm sure that's not what they had in mind when they designed it, but um, it's a little bit nostalgic. So I'm going to add a little bit of ink here onto my brush. I don't want a ton. I don't want this to be super dark. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of rub it onto my block here so I can get some of the ink off. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to kind of lightly uh, go over everything here, adding a little bit of ink. And I just want to make sure I get all of the spots. And then what's really nice about the pixie spray is you can kind of lift that up and look and see, oh, hey, I do think that's good or no, I don't. I want to add a little bit more and it kind of keeps it in place. It's really amazing. I think that that's good. I think that's what I want. Yes. Okay. So let me pick up that. And again, it's still a little bit tacky. And what I find is when it runs out of tack, I just spray it again. Um, because the only thing I'm going to do with this mask is put it on top of paper. And so I don't care how much stuff gets on here. Now, if you really do want to clean it off, you can. You can run it underwater and use some soap and like a toothbrush or something like that, and you can get this adhesive off. But in my experience using this stuff, I've never needed to do that. So um, it's kind of up to you. If you want to take it off, you certainly can. Okay. So we have those two pieces. We can go ahead and add them to the card. I'm going to add the designer series paper to the top. Bubble gum. Oh my gosh, you guys. So do I. But you know what it reminds me of? Ugh, what is with my seal? Uh, how many of you remember Mr. Bubble? <laughs> Mr. Bubble came in that pink bottle. And so that's really what I think of when I think of the word bubble bath. That's what comes to my mind. Uh, the bottom half, this is a three by four, Cheryl. And this is a three by four, two by four. So that's what this bubble bath reminds me of is the bottle of Mr. Bubble. Because when I was a kid, that was like 
something amazing that we got to. That's like a treat, you know, and you'd get in the bathtub and you'd get to put in your cap full of Mr. Bubble to your bath, you know, and sometimes you'd try to cheat when mom wasn't looking and maybe throw in two capfuls. Yeah. So anyways, that's what this reminds me of is the Mr. Bubble. Oh, Carol is having beautiful weather in Connecticut. Yay. We are having rain and we are under a flood watch. Uh, a lot of the snow melt in the mountains uh, with the rain is going to get wet and it's going to come down. And hopefully uh, we don't uh, get any flooding, but it's possible. Okay, so there is, uh, this is kind of a fun fold card just because of the way everything is folded. I think that kind of constitutes fun fold. So we have those two pieces. Then I have a piece of fresh freesia. And I need to measure this again because I forgot what I cut it to. And that was this morning. Um, this is a three by four and one eighth. I know it's a weird measurement, but it needs to be that for, uh, this die cut to fit. So this was, what did I say? Three by four and one eighth. And then I cut my paper to two and three quarters by three and seven eighths. So that way, when I put the die on the paper, it was like right in the middle. It was right in the center. And so then I ran that through and that's what you get. You get this cute little frame. And I am going to go ahead and just glue it flat down. I'm not going to try to pop it up. I don't, I don't, for this card, that's not what I'm going to do with it. So I'm going to get some liquid glue and I'm just going to go ahead and put it down. So I'm going to just add my glue right here along the edge. And then we can add it. And hopefully the way I cut my paper um, is the perfect size. We shall see. I think it is. I think it turned out pretty good. I feel like I'm going to need to scooch. Oops, I scooched it too much. Okay, I think. Yes, these dies are very cute, Joanne. I know, right? Okay. So we have that. Then uh, we needed to get some flowers and some leaves. So uh, this is a tip. If you guys have a Stamparatus, this is a tip for you. If you don't, then you can just, you know, stamp and die cut the flowers that you need. Uh, but if you have a Stamparatus, this is what I did this morning. I put most, actually I put all the, dot, all the stamps on my Stamparatus. So actually what is, I got a six by six piece of cardstock. This is white. And I kind of laid all the stamps on my paper and then I inked them up and of course folded that over and stamped them. So then now all I have to do is die cut blank flowers and leaves such as these and I can just stick them in here. So I can just do that. And then if I needed this little leaf piece here or something like that, uh, that way I can then just stamp what I need. So if I wanted my flower to be bubble bath, I can do this, stamp it bubble bath. And then my uh, little leaf piece over here, I want it to be, uh, what is this? Is this stretch paper? Yeah, I want it to be soft sea foam. So I can kind of block off some of these other things on here if I want, get the soft sea foam, and then I can flip over my lid. Now this is only, of course, if you have a Stamparatus, but if you have any other sort of positioning tool, this will work. Um, and then you get these perfect little uh, stamped images from doing that. And I need to get that one out. So I actually went ahead and I have a second set of magnets. And so I have my second set of magnets on here holding this paper down. Uh, so that's what I, that's what I did. Okay. So I ended up, so then what I have here is I have this little bubble bath flower that needs the middle filled in. So the detailed stamps are on my Stamparatus. And then we also have the stamps, um, the filler stamps. Uh, and so you don't need those on the Stamparatus, but we need to use them to fill in this flower. So again, I'm going to use the bubble bath ink. So I'm going to ink up my stamp here. I'm going to stamp it off just real quick. 
And then I can see through my stamp and I can see the detailed outline that I've already gotten. And then I can just fill it in just like that. That I don't think I didn't get as much off as I should have. So that didn't work out so great. But of course, I have some already done that are better. So here's my little tray of pieces that I already have cut out. And um, here's a fresh freesia. Here's one that I did in lemon lolly. Here is a leaf. Of course, we have the little sprig, which is so stinking cute. Um, the little partial flowers, the little stems. I was really impressed with my die cutting skills, you guys, after I stamped that whole sheet and then I die cut them all. I'm very, very careful about die cutting sheets like that when I'm going to use my Stamparatus. And I really line them up carefully and then I tape them down with, um, where is my tape? My post-it labeling tape to keep them in place when I run them through to die cut them. So here are the pieces that I actually ended up use that I'm going to use on the card right here. So I have a large bubble bath flower. I have two little partial freesia flowers. Um, I had a leaf piece here, the trio, and then I just cut it apart. I got the little sprig. I have this tiny little uh, leaf with the stem and then this little tiny flower too. So we've got a large bubble bath flower, two small freesia flowers, a freesia bud, a small freesia flower. This fun piece I die cut out of vellum. So in your kit, you would get some vellum. And then I did do the taller little sprig thing out of vellum also. And then I just cut it. So it was like this. And I just snipped it apart. So now all we have to do is just throw our design on here um, and just kind of decorate that. So I'm going to, of course, use some dimensionals. Uh, not everything will have a dimensional on it, but uh, we're going to go a couple on the large flower here. And I'm going to kind of set that kind of in the middle, but down tiny bit. Uh, then I've got the two freesias, and I'm going to do them without dimensionals, and I'm just going to kind of shove them under. So that it sort of looks like they were actually full-size flowers, but they're not. It's a little trick. And I'm going to tuck that one under there. And then I've got this little leaf thing, this little duo of leaves here that I'm going to throw on. Just underneath that. My little sprig here. And I'm going to kind of push that um, up here, coming out the top. I've got another, this little tiny flower out of freesia. I had to pick it up. I don't have any fingernails. So I've got a mini dimensional that I'll stick that on with. So don't forget, this is a card that you are going to get to make if you do get this kit from me. And then finally, we've just got this little tiny uh, leaf and stem piece here. And I'm going to kind of tuck that down underneath my frame there. And then I'm just going to add this little guy with another mini dimensional. And that will almost be it. We do have our pieces of vellum that we're going to add. So we've got the big one here that I think I'm going to tuck in behind some of these things. So I may end up trimming that off just a little bit because I can't get it to tuck. Uh, the way that I have it here. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of liquid glue to the bottom of it because I don't care if it kind of floats, if it kind of free floats in the air there. There we go. So that's just a little bit of vellum just for a little bit of interest. And then one of these little half pieces here, I am going to tuck underneath this flower here. Whoops, you need to get under there. Like that. And then this little piece, maybe I'll just tuck that up under there. So it's just kind of, I don't even know, there's no real rhyme or reason. You just kind of throw the stuff wherever you can get it to go. Maybe we'll just stick it in there. Isn't that adorable? So we have a little bit of vellum just for some interest. 
and then we're going to add this to the front of the card. So we're going to add it to the top section. So what I like to do when I'm adding things to flipper flappers, I like to call these ends, is I'm going to put some glue at the top of this piece, and then I'm going to put some at the bottom of this piece here. And then when I add these, when I add this piece to the front, then it should work perfectly. So I'm trying to center it so that it's centered, you know, top to bottom, side to side. Okay, like that. And then we're going to work on the inside. We'll put a sentiment on the inside. But the other thing I wanted to do on the outside is I do have some of the oval gems. Hmm. At least I thought, oh, I just found them. At least I thought I did. <laughs> ah, you know how it is. You're trying to put stuff out here and then you're just making a mess. And I've just got a giant mess going on here now. And ugh can't handle it. So anyway, I tied a little bow with the pink ribbon and I do want to add this to the card somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where though cuz I don't want to I don't want to cover up everything, but I do want to have I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it like right there even though I'm going to cover up some stuff. I think that's okay. I can actually make this a tiny bit smaller if I want. I can just pull my ends in just a little bit and then I can pull this tight. And then after I add it, I'm going to trim off the ends so that it's not quite so long. So I'm going to press that knot into a glue dot. And I'm going to go ahead, like I said, just stick it right there. And get my scissors that I only use for ribbon out. And trim off the ends here. I just like how this has a little bit of bling that silver uh, shiny stuff through the throughout there just is really fun it gives it a nice color okay so then i'm going to bring in my little ovals and we're going to try to do something with ovals ovals are a little kind of a little odd but i do think they're cute and so we'll go ahead and kind of put a couple up here oops pick that up you need to get onto my take your pick tool you little stinker. Get off there. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of set this right here so that when the card is closed, we have a little accent piece there. So now we're going to head to the inside. And we're just going to add a little bit of interest in here. So I've got a ton of sentiments in here. But I kind of like the happy birthday sentiment. And these sentiments are kind of... Uh, they're like the dual, what do you call them? The dual, the dual fonts. And I know some people don't like that. I do like it. I think the dual font stamps are fun, but you know, to each his own. So thankfully Stampin' Up! has a lot of variety of things to choose from. So uh, we can all find something we like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp a few things in here. I'm going to do a half flower. Um, oh, I need to pull. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, what am I going to do here? I may have to do a little tiny bit of cheating because I may have to pull that off my stamparatus. Yeah, I'm going to have to. That's okay. So I've pulled off this flower from my stamparatus and I'm going to stamp it like so. And then we're going to ink up the opposite side, and I am going to stamp this off. So here's my foam. Whoops, that didn't work. I had my scissors in the way, so it's not completely flat. Jeez Louise, how many pairs of scissors does a person need to have on? What am I on top of? How many pairs of scissors does a person need to have on their desk before there's too many? Let's take that one off. And again, we can see through the flower here, so we can go ahead and stamp that. Um, and then we need our stem. So let's pull that off. And we'll get a block for that. So I'm going to add my stem here. So I need some more soft seafoam ink. Ink that up. And I am going to kind of cover the bottom part of the card here. 
There we go with our stem. And then we need a leaf. Where's my leaf? Right here. So we need a little leaf image. So we'll kind of add one there, add one there. And then we have our bold leaf somewhere in this box. And we're going to do that also. So I'm going to ink it up and stamp it off. And then I can see through for the most part. So I can do that. So now we have a little bit of interest on the inside. And then we can do our sentiment. And I'm actually going to do the sentiment just right next to my flower. I like doing that. Um, I've just recently, within the past few months, come to really enjoy just stamping my sentiments right next to the decoration that I may have on the inside of the card. I just think that's really fun. Then, of course, we need an envelope. Um, why? All the envelopes that I have in my closet at this moment all have my return address label on them. So hold on while I open up a package of envelopes. <laughs> I don't really want my address out for the entire world uh, to see. So we're going to try to be a little discreet here. And then we're going to stamp that same uh, that same stuff on the outside of the envelope. So we will add our flower there. We'll add the inside. I really like how easy it is to see inside these flowers. When you're stamping them, a lot of these two-step stamp sets, you know, you don't, you can't always see great in them, but this one you really can. So it's really nice. Okay. And another one. And what did I do with, here it is. Get those leaves done. There it is. Okay. Let me put the ink away so I don't stick my hands in it because... As we all know, Barb has a problem getting ink on stuff. I think we all do. It's not just Barb. I think it's everybody. And there we go. So there we have our adorable, delightful details card. Kind of a fun fold. And again, if you sign up for my Darling Details class, this is one of the cards you will make. You make four card or eight cards to each of four designs. So you'll make two of these. Um, and then two of three other designs that have yet to be designed. But they will, and they will be just as amazing, I promise. So there you go. Card number one. Let me kind of clean up a little bit here. And then we will move on a little to our next project, which is, I don't know. I think it's going to be a Cheerful Daisies card, maybe? We'll see. Okay, I do have a quite a few things that I got out for this card, don't I? Wow, that's kind of a lot. Okay, anyway, here we are. And Terry has joined us. Welcome, Terry. Glad you can make it. Okay. So the Cheerful Daisies, I'm sure you've seen a ton of cards with these. Um, it was one of the things on the demonstrator pre-order. So lots of us have been making lots of cards with it. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so this one, I um, it's kind of another fun fold. Now here is the piece that I was talking about from the Darling Details. This is the edge piece and so that's what that how that cuts out so it doesn't cut the top off it just cuts the bottom and then you can have this be as long as you need it to be okay so that is done out of copper clay which is one of the, the new in colors which i just love and then we have a copper clay card base that i will fold in half there we go bring in my trimmer here oh i just dropped my scoring blade on the floor, but we don't need it, so it's fine. And we are going to cut from the edge down to the score line in two places, one and a quarter inch from the edge. So I like to use this side of my trimmer um, if it's a small measurement. And I'm going to come, I'm going to close it up, I'm going to put my blade right on the fold line that I just made, and I'm going to cut from the fold line up. I'm going to slide it over to the one and a quarter inch mark on this side. 
I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to close it. I'm going to find my score line and I'm going to do that same thing. So now I have all these fun little flips, flaps, flipper flappers. Um, and so mostly I've got most of this card already done, so it's not going to be a big problem. So we also have, because this is not a white card, um, I have a white card for the inside. And this is five and three eighths by four and one eighth. So let me go ahead and add this to the inside of the card. Uh, so about like this. There we go. And then I have these two pieces are going to cover this center section. So uh, the desi designer series paper measures two and three quarters by four. And then this bubble bath piece measures two and seven eighths by four and one eighth. And they're going to go together. So we'll just add these two pieces together. Um, there we go. Very, very skinny borders on these pieces, you guys. And look at that. If you were wondering what the sketched plaid stamp, the background stamp looks like when it's stamped, that um, is your visual for that. That is a fun background stamp. It is also something that we are featuring in the new catalog kickoff. Uh, that you can add to your make and take packet order if you don't already have it. Okay, so we're getting that onto that. Then we have four more pieces of cardstock. These are all bubble bath and they all measure one and one eighth by four and an eighth. Okay, so you have four bubble baths. Then we also have four pieces of designer series paper that are one by fours. And I have four of them, two different patterns. Now, these are part of the Daisy papers. Um, so it's called the Fresh as a Daisy Designer Series Paper, the 12 by 12. Uh, one of my favorite pieces is this big, huge one on the front. I guess it's not on the front, but it's a big, huge piece that you can actually just cut these little sections out and just make a card with that little section so the work is already done for you. But um, I really like that there are patterns on the back that are, are in colors. Did you guys notice that? That the patterns on the back of most of these pieces, so we've got the boho, we've got the copper clay, we've got the pebbled path, we've got the wild wheat. This one here is just kind of a combination piece. And then this big piece here has the moody mauve on the back of it. So really nice papers because then you can use the bright, uh, vivid piece and you can pair it with the kind of more muted solid color. So you're going to add your designer series papers to these uh, strips here of cardstock. And again, they're going to have just very slight borders about uh, 16th of an inch. And I should say, while I'm thinking about it, you guys, it's uh, very probable that I will not be live next Thursday. I don't know for a fact, um, but I'm leaving Friday. And it is possible that um, time may get away from me and I may not be able to do it. We'll see. Um, I hope that I can because I love doing these lives on Thursday nights with you guys. But I also love going on vacation and I need to prepare. <laughs> So these two pieces are going to go on our white layer. Cheryl's telling me to take it off, <laughs> meaning the day. And I just might. We'll see. My daughter's supposed to come home on Sunday. And of course, once she gets here, she'll be able to help me a little bit uh, with some of these things that I need to do. Um, but whenever she's here, I, I tend to get less work done. I don't know why that is. She's supposed to be helping me, but yet I get less work done. That doesn't make sense, but it's a fact. So, um, and we are planning, I don't know if you guys, if any of you are cruising people, if any of you do any cruises, but there's kind of a new trend um, called cruising ducks, which I have recently become aware of. And basically what you do is you buy rubber ducks, you can decorate them or not decorate them. And then you 
you can download from some different cruise groups uh, these little tags that you put around your duck. Now, this is the one that I chose because I thought it was the most adorable thing. Um, it's got the Royal Caribbean logo on it because that's the kind of ship we're going on. And it says Passport, Cruising Ducks. And then you open it up and it has our, our, our ship and our date. We're going May 21st to the 28th. Uh, my daughter and I are the ones that are hiding the duck and where we're from. And then this particular little thing has a fun little joke. Um, to it. And then on the back, it tells you that if you find the duck, you can keep it or hide it, uh, but don't hide it at any stores or any pools or hot tubs. And then they tell you to take a selfie with it and post it to this fun group. Now, let me go grab my ducks. So since I'm from Wyoming, I kind of thought a cowboy duck would be appropriate for us to hide on the ship. I only got a dozen. I didn't want to be a crazy person and hide like, you know, 500. Uh, so I got a dozen and each of the ducks, you they come with hats and sunglasses, but you have to glue them on. Um, and then little, little scarves. So there's pink, brown, white, and black. Isn't this just ridiculous? But it's so cute. <laughs> And so basically, we are going to then attach this little passport, we're going to tie it around the duck, and then we're going to hide these on the ship. And then, then we're done. I mean, we're not expecting anything to happen if people find them and end up, you know, posting to that group, that'd be awesome and fun for us. Uh, but so that's our plan. So she's got this, we've got this little project to do when she comes home. Um, I just remembered that. So I thought I'd throw that out there. I didn't know if any of you guys had been cruising lately or whatever, but that's kind of become a thing from what I understand. So we'll see. All right. So we have all of our designer series paper pieces and cardstock pieces put on the card. And now we're going to put this little kind of spanner piece on here. So I'm going to add just a little bit of glue to the ends. And maybe all the way down. We'll see how much glue we can get on here without making a mess. Sometimes I make a mess. Sometimes I don't. We'll see. But anyways, yeah, that's kind of the uh, a new little kind of trendy thing. I don't know. I, I think uh, I don't know if it was a young gal who did it first. I'm not sure. But uh, her and her dad have the Facebook group. It's called Cruising Ducks, if you're at all interested. Um, and oh, some of these people, they are serious about these ducks, you guys. Uh, there are ladies that like crochet ducks. Um, I'm not that talented. So, um, yeah, check it out. There's a group on Facebook called, I think it's just called Cruising Ducks. Um, and, yeah, check that out for yourself. Okay. Then uh, I have some flowers that I've already made. And I don't know which one I like the best. Uh, don't pay any attention to that wild wheat middle on this one. Because I would cover it up with this little bubble bath middle. Same with um, this middle one. I would put the bubble bath on the middle. So you guys tell me if I should use flower one, two, or three, keeping in mind that the middle of both of these flowers would be this bubble bath middle. So comment which one you like the best, one, two, or three. Um, and I am going to um, add a little something to the card. So this is a like 15 sixteenths by two and three quarter inch piece of white. So far, we do not have a clear winner. <laughs> I love it when this happens. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five ones. One, two, three twos, actually six ones. Three twos, four threes. Wow, I may have to like get a pole out here. And um, I got to figure out where I want to put this about right here. I may have to get my pen and paper out here and do a tally so we can actually see what we've got going on here. So do I have a piece of paper? Yes, I do. Okay, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven. So number one, we have seven. Number two, we have one, two, three, four. And number three, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my gosh, if I counted right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like number one is the winner 
um, even though a lot of you did like number three also. Maybe I can put the other one that we didn't pick, we'll put on the inside. So we have our little spanner piece here, and I'm going to go, I think, because we're going to stick it right here, kind of covering that under piece, which I didn't stick in a very good spot, but it is what it is. It'll still look like a nice card. So we're going to go with number one. So I'm going to add some glue to this little piece here. And then we will add our flower. Kind of, I'm trying to cover up as much as that as I can, even though it, it's not going to be completely covered up, which is fine. Um, I need a mini here. Yeah, at first I thought that wild wheat would look good at that center piece, but then I didn't like it. Um, and so I wanted to go with the bubble bath instead. I thought that would be cuter. So there we go with that. Um, and like I said, I'm going to throw... Which one? This one, number three was the other one. So we're just going to put that on the inside. Add a little glue there. And we'll throw this down like so. We'll just have a tiny place to write a message. Um, sometimes you don't have a whole lot to say. So basically, this is how this card works. We have our front piece that we flip over. And then we have a fun little sentiment here. And then we open, up it, open it again. And then we have that. So there we go. And now I couldn't decide which gems I wanted. I've got a lot of choices here. I think I'm going to go with these kind of coppery um, neutral sequins. I just think they'll be kind of fun on here. So let's, they'll add a little bit of sparkle. And then they'll, of course, coordinate with the copper clay cardstock, I feel like, too. So um, I think that'll be fun right there. So then we have just a tiny bit of bling. Always fun to catch the light. Okay, so let's put these away. So that is another project. Of course, it was a quick one. Um, sorry about that. I would have probably prepared a little better had I not fallen asleep. What the heck? I still can't believe I did that. I mean, normally as I'm sitting somewhere, I, I can feel myself start to fall asleep, you know, but this time I, I was just done. I was out, which... Apparently I was tired. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. That was card number two. And now card number three is a card. I got a card in a swap and I really, really liked it. And so I wanted to share it with you. So um, this is kind of going to be a little bit of my own version of it, even though it's basically the same. But I decided to go ahead and use the Timeless Arrangements bundle. So we've got these really fun dies here. So there are three label sizes in here. Plus, we have these little pieces that end up cutting out. Let's, oh, where did my package go? Oh, I know, Hope. I try to give, I'm trying to give myself a break. But it's just that there's so much work to do. And it's like, I don't, I, I don't have time to not feel good. And it, it's just a real bummer. Um, so these dies are pretty cool. They cut all kinds of fun things here. So this is one of them. This would be this die here. And here is the piece that it cuts out. Now you can actually stamp a sentiment out of this stamp set right here if you want to. They are very thin and you could stamp it on there or you can take, well, here's a label that I did that's not for this card, obviously, but you can also use it as a really as a back, as a piece that makes it easy to add um, these little fun bits to the backs of your labels. So you have something to glue, add the glue to. So they're really versatile and they're just really interesting. So I have a bunch of pieces of these cut out from various colors, uh, mostly Night of Navy, Boho Blue, and uh, Misty Moonlight. So let me stick those back in so I don't lose any of them. Jeez, I probably would. Um, and then I have the Countryside Corners dies. And I did use, must be this one here, the third from the largest die. And I cut that out of the designer series paper that I think is called Country, Country Lane. Oh gosh, Cheryl, help me out again. <laughs> Country Lane, I think, designer series paper. 
I don't have my paper charts done. I don't have anything done. I'm so far behind. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Um, and then we'll also have a piece of cardstock that I have run through this countryside blossoms embossing paper. Oh, countryside. Thank you, Joanne. And so this is pretty cool. Here is the detail on this. Thank you, Cheryl. Countryside Inn is the name of that paper. So here is that layer. Um, and then I also have a Knight of Navy card base. So basically how this is going to go down is this designer series paper is going to layer onto uh, this piece of design or embossed. And then I also have a strip of designer series paper out of the same package. I liked these kind of muted stripes. And this measures, where's my ruler? This measures, not centimeters, I don't know how to do that. One and a quarter, must be by five and a quarter. Oh, I've got it at five and a half, but that's too long because it doesn't go across the entire card. It's only going to go across this layer here. So I'm going to go ahead and add my glue to the bottom of this layer. And since it is embossed, I am definitely going to use liquid glue on it. So that way, um, I just feel like designer series paper sticks better or anything sticks better um, when you use liquid glue on something that's been embossed. Um, other people might not agree with me and that's fine. That's just my own personal opinion. Okay. What color was, oh, this is crumb cake, Cheryl. I did use some crumb cake here. And let me snip off that excess. So it should be one and a quarter by five and a quarter is what it should be. And then it's going to go on to our Knight of Navy card base. Again, using liquid glue. Because I just like the fact that the liquid glue can kind of get down into those little crevices. And I just feel like it gives a better bond uh, by doing that. So we're going to layer this on here. There we go. Whoops, that is crooked. And that's another reason why I like liquid glue. Then I can move things around a tiny bit if I need to. <laughs> okay, so then our layer would go here like that. And then we have a piece to do some stamping on. And I am going to use a sentiment out of, I think it's out of, out of this, out of the timeless arrangements. It says, your kindness means everything to me. And... I'm going to stamp that in navy, I think, on this little die cut. So this is out of the timeless, timeless arrangements. So let's get some ink on here. And we'll try to stamp this in the center as best we can. I don't know how it's going to work. There we go. That worked out pretty good. I'm not mad about that at all. Okay, and so then I kind of thought what I might do is just add a few of these fun little pieces to the back. Um, I don't know what, I, I just cut a whole bunch of things. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how I want it to go. But I kind of like that there. Um, I like this little piece here at the end let's just sort of see what we got here we could do that um i do have some little bitty uh, navy pieces that we can throw up here um here's another piece and some of these i just had like some scraps and so it's not the full piece it's just some scraps that i threw um throughout and so i can kind of tuck this behind this maybe I think I might just, I'm thinking I'm just going to wing it. I'm not going to be too anal about it. A lot of times I'm too anal about stuff. I am going to try to just wing it and just start throwing stuff wherever I think it might look good. But I might need a silicone mat since I'm using glue here. Okay, so I think I want this guy where i don't know i think i'm going to have it in that same corner that i was testing it in but i'm not going to have it exactly lined up on that piece because i actually think i don't want there i think i kind of want it like that instead of the way i originally had it okay so then this navy thing i think i'm going to have it be 
right back there. So let's just throw a little glue on that, kind of add some more color right here. And as you can see, that sticks out. So we'll just chop it off. We don't need it. We're just going to chop it off. Okay, so here's a little piece of boho blue that I'm going to stick to the edge there, I think. This is kind of a new thing for me. I am not really a random type person. I typically have everything thought out before I before I go before I go live. Um, but this one I just I didn't because of course I didn't have time. <laughs> so we're just gonna wing it. Oh, this little cute thing right here. That's fun. Let's go ahead and throw it down here at the end, but I want it to be on the top. So I'm gonna kind of slide it there, like that. What else do we have left? I've got some other pieces in here. We're just gonna load this thing up because literally why not? Okay, I think I need a little bit of navy there at the end. So we will throw some navy here, like that. And then I kind of think we might need some misty moonlight up here on this end, and then maybe something else there. We'll see. What else do we have? We have, oh, I have a boho uh, thing. Do that. Oh, here's a boho thing. This little tiny thing. This is fun. Okay, and I think that might do it. All right, so we have just randomly glued a whole bunch of pieces uh, to it. And look at that giant mess on the back. <laughs> the beauty of it is no one's going to know that it's that messy. So we're just going to throw some dimensionals back here. And we'll take the backings off. Oops, but you know what I have to do? I have to glue this down first so that I can actually add that uh, piece to the card. So I am going to use the edges, like these little points right here on this die cut piece to place that. Oh, you know what? I need to scooch it up a little bit. It's down too far. That doesn't look right. Okay. Then we're going to pick up our little piece carefully. Hopefully it's not too much. I think it'll be all right. And stick it down. It's not even even. Well, I think so, maybe. Okay. Then we need some gems, and the ones I was going to use, I'm changing my mind. And I'm going to bring in these instead of what I was going to use. I was going to use these, the blue ones, but I don't want that now. I want something that's not blue. So I'm going to bring in these adhesive backed sparkle gems. And we're going to add those. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys at the beginning of the show, if you place an order in my online store that's $75 or more uh, by the 20th, I think, then I will send you a package of these in-color pearls. And they are so shiny and they're so pretty. So this is the Parakeet, the Tahitian Tide, Sweet Sorbet, Starry Sky, and Orchid. Um, that's where that comes from. Okay, we're going to go with this kind of gold color. And I'm just going to maybe sprinkle them around. Ooh, I know what. I'm going to do what I always do. I always do this. I put two somewhere and one somewhere else, and that's what I'm going to do now. But I'm going to move this one closer. Okay, there we go. So then we have some other color besides blue on the front. Um, and then I had an inside piece that I already had stamped. Oh, here it is. So here's another piece of that designer series paper. And I cut it to three quarters by four, put a little Knight of Navy strip just to kind of break up the paper from the background. And then I did stamp some of the images from the Timeless Arrangement set. So I stamped this little floral piece in navy colored my flowers in with uh, the boho blue light. I stamped this little kind of sprig in the boho blue and colored it in boho blue. And then I kind of added this little, I don't know what this is, thing yeah, to the background. So we have a little bit of some fun on the inside. So now we can just add that to the inside of the card. And 
So we always got to have a fun inside. I'm not always huge at decorating my envelopes. I try, but um, I'm not that great. But I always want to go with the inside. So there it is. So I hope you guys like that. Um, it was fun for me to design it, just to kind of throw those little sprigs all around in there. Didn't really know what we were going to do with them. Um, so here's our other fun card, our kind of flippy flappy. I don't know what you call this. I'm sure it has a name, but um, that's always fun. And then finally, our darling details, which is one of the cards in my class. So if you sign up for my class with the link in the description of the video here, uh, you can make uh, these cards along with three other cards for a total of eight cards um, in the class. So there it is. So I hope you guys had a great time. I always have fun uh, stamping with you guys. Um, again, I don't know. I might be here next week. I might not. Probably not. Uh, but if not, I'll see you in another week from that. And I'll tell you all about the fun that the three of us had on our cruise. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, Dina and I are both taking our daughters who are the same age. I think they're maybe six months apart. And then Kelly's taking her mom. So <laughs> definitely a girl's trip, you guys. So, all right. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys had a great time. All the links to everything are in the description of the video. Have a great week and I will see you later, guys. Bye-bye.